Day 7, the Western Breach section. Yikes. You should search it on YouTube. Very difficult, and we gained 2,800 feet of vertical in just 1.8 miles. But that took us over eight hours to accomplish. So worth it. Some of the pitches were 59 degrees. We spent the night at Crater Camp at 18,838 feet in what they call the Arctic Summit Zone. Amazing is all I can say. Amazing. There were times, especially on the headwall portion, that I found myself tapping on rock to listen for that solid or hollow sound to make sure that what you were about to pull on or step up on was going to hold you. I certainly did not want to have a rock get loose. Our camp was just by the Furt Wangler Glacier that also provided spectacular views of the northern ice fields and glaciers, and the ash pit was just some 800 meters away. It is Tuesday night. Um, I'm not sure of the date, but today was a 3.30 a.m. wake-up call uh, from uh, uh, the Arrow Glacier Camp. We had breakfast at 4, and uh, we were instructed to have everything packed and ready um, so we could be on the trail at 4.30. Headlamps uh, was pretty cool. But let me tell you something, sports fans. Um, uh, the Western Breach route that we took to where I am right now, um, and we're actually spending the night in the crater, which is, I think, also pretty cool. Uh, but we're at, uh, we left at 16,000 feet. And at the moment, we're at 18, uh, 880. Uh, short summit in the morning, which is how wilderness, wilderness travel likes to do it. And uh, uh, today was rugged, it was tough, it was a grind. But to get up here and see the glaciers that are left, um, and then to get into the crater, get to the tents, uh, dinner's in about 10 minutes, but uh, Millie, you kind of rode along for the ride, but um, the Western Breach route, Yeah, uh, scary, uh, sc scary, and did did I say scary? And tough, almost straight up. Um, amazed at how the porters carried gear up there. I, I mean, baffled me. But anyhow, uh, four o'clock, wake up in the morning uh, on the trail at five. Sunset, uh, sunset, sunrise is at 6.30, so we're hoping to be up there by the sunrise, close to it. Take some pictures on the sign, 19,341 feet above sea level. Stay tuned for more. Everything that night at 18,800 feet froze in my tent, and Millie slept in the backpack. Our eighth day was summit day, and we left at 4.45 a.m. for a short summit climb, only 600 feet of gain, but steep. After spending 21 minutes on the summit, the tough part was ahead. 9,000 feet of vertical descent and not easy by any means. After 8.1 miles and over nine and a half hours on the trail, Mount Maweka Camp at 10,000 feet was a very welcomed sight.
job, Fred. Fred on the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. Africa highest point, the world highest freestanding mountain. So cool. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. there of course it is there the peak the crater we slept in a sea of clouds the sun the hike up was pretty cold more people coming to the sign we make it a great Wednesday The trip down gave us views of many remaining glaciers, stopped at Stella Point, and then there was Mount Kibu guiding us down the initial pitch, which was made up of soft volcanic ash that you could actually slide down with your feet. We stopped at Barafu Camp to shed layers as it had warmed up nicely, and Abi was there to greet me with my duffel. There were many of these stretchers along the route to take those down who may have injured themselves or succumbed to altitude sickness and could go no further. Certainly not a ride I would like to take. So tonight, last night in our tent, did you have a good time? Yeah. You got up at, uh, ooh. Four, th four o'clock. Um, breakfast at 4.30 and we're on the route up to the summit around a little after five. Um, 800 and so feet of gain. Um, it was a pretty steep route uh, in light of the fact that we stayed in the uh, crater at Crater Camp and only people there, uh, which was really cool looking at some of the amazing glaciers that still exist on Kili. Um, I'm not gonna kid you. Um, I was the first one of our group to, quote, touch the sign, um, emotional. Yeah, and uh, uh, I've said before, this trip was about um, hopefully getting me some good medicine uh, in light of 2020 personal things. But uh, it was great, and I think, uh, and that's not that I think a new door has opened uh, certainly for me, and uh, looking forward to it. Now when people say, how you doing? I don't have to say, uh, I'm good, but not great. And now I can say I'm great. Um, trip down was long. Whew. We descended 9,000 feet, covered almost nine miles today. And uh, the last bit was down through a dry creek bed that was just horrific. <laughs> uh, uh, knees feel pretty good, but uh, Hey, getting ready for dinner and uh, uh, out of the park tomorrow. And uh, I think we're leaving here around 8 o'clock. And, you know, it's been a great day. And uh, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. The last day took us a little less than four hours through the forest zone again. It had rained, so it slowed us down. But I'm glad it did and that the forest zone is oh, 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 so beautiful. We covered roughly 4.3 miles, and it felt so great to stand next to the congratulations Bon Voyage sign at the Moeka Gate. And our adventure, our journey, was now complete.
Before departing Maweka Camp, we had the opportunity to donate any of our personal gear to the porters. For me, this was a very, very humbling experience. I saw that. Oh, I can't even lift my thighs. We'll recover, huh? They're almost in the body. It's tied in four legs. I'm sore. Yes. But actually, since I've been moving, yeah, I feel much better. But when I first stood up, <laughs> I think I fell down the first time. Wait, you stood up in your tent? <laughs> that was never accomplished. <laughs> Don't hit the tree, right? There was a clearing at one point on the descent that we stopped at, and being a blue sky day, there she was, stunning views of Kili and where we had just been some 24 hours earlier. After 12 months, I look forward to the Lamosha Gate. I look forward to summiting. And I look forward to that sign right there. Congratulations. Bon voyage. Uh, Abi Malik. Yo. Abi Malik. Yeah, man. What's up? High five. Boom. Congratulations, man. Thank you. You did the best. So after our climb, wilderness travel had us for a lunch in this beautiful garden. And then there's you, Obey. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Ah, Richard, yeah. Matthew, Asante. Hey, we're done with Kilimanjaro and uh, couldn't have been with a better group. But I gotta introduce the three guys that headed this whole thing up. Uh, so blessed and honored to have them uh, get me somewhere up there. And, and the whole team. To the top of Kilimanjaro. Uh, yes. yes. Samia, AKA Simba. Juma. JK, or Jumba, uh, AKA Hollywood. I gave him that. <laughs> Boniface. AKA Bonnie, uh, these three, the history is, is amazing. Now, before I ask you a question, I understand you gave me uh, uh, what? Then your nickname, we call you Mountain Madness because yes. you are very prepared for Kilimanjaro climb and you are ready for any action. And you are among the strongest among the climbers. That's why we gave him the name Mountain Madness. So, so there's a dog that got up the Western Bridge. The most beautiful one. <laughs> we love Benny. Definitely. <laughs> Bonnie, what did you think of the whole thing? Benny group? climbed the mountain all the way to the top. Yeah, uh, I can say everybody's doing a great job. We're proud of the team. And then a part of the team, 
we don't have, we are, Meli is not with us, but we have Meli in the spiritual, all the way to the summit, down to 10,000 feet. Melly, you're the best. We brought you. Are you are the best. best. JK, what, what do you think of the group and the, and the trip? Excellent. Everything went well. Because you've been on many. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, sir. Last but not least, Simba. How many times? Uh, 381. I've been climbing Kimanjaro. And how many, to the top. how many years? Uh, from 1994 up to now. <laughs> Am I a lucky guy? You bet. You yeah. are like And that. behind the camera, yeah. right? Yep. Abi Melek. Abi. Who, who took care of me? Yes. Oh, oh he's going to show himself. <laughs> ah. There you go. He wants to be a doctor. Uh, and yeah. I, I want him to be a doctor. Absolutely. Yep. We love Take you. Close. We love you. Yeah. Yeah. We love you. We love you. We Thank you. After two hours on the trail, we arrived to a beautiful waterfall with a dining tent next to it, and there was Amin, with Millie inside, waiting for us. Our chef, hiding behind some foliage, grilled a spectacular lunch, and all I can say is, wilderness travel knows how to do it right. Goodbye, Tanzania. You gotta love it, walking up the gangplank. It's a big ass engine. See you next time. I came home to Ella and Graham who had made a beautiful sign for Pops and Millie and I went on a morning hike before going to the office. I have since created Killy Corner in my new home and the amazing leasing team at Phillips Edison signed and presented a fabulous black and white photo of Killy for me. In that Friday night, the Boneyard in Park City surprised me with a welcome home party that many of my dear friends came to say, congrats and well done. So there you have it, three segments. I decided to go down that path with my videographer, editor, Doug Baker. And Doug did a fabulous job of putting the adventure together. And you saw a lot of flat Millie, so I figure it was uh, certainly <laughs> appropriate. Mills, come here. And this is the real Millie, aren't you? Yeah. We're up here in the Uintas. Um, and hey, what's next? Uh, well, Aconcagua in Argentina. Uh, Aconcagua is 22,838, the highest mountain in the world outside of uh, the Himalayas. So looking forward to doing that uh, come December of this year, leaving November 30th. What do you guys have in store of uh, getting out and doing an adventure, doing something that challenges yourself, something that can help, uh, again, not only improve, build your mental health, like I've chosen to do with, uh, with Kilimanjaro and coming up uh, Aconcagua. So... Millie and I are going to continue our quest up here of getting in shape for that adventure and that journey. I look forward to sharing uh, our training with you over the next few months. Uh, that one's going to be a lot tougher, and uh, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, something that will really challenge me. But that's it. So if you're watching this, you saw hopefully all three segments. Uh, I tried to put it together. Millie, come. I tried to put it together where uh, 
you know, you could do it in chunks, but it's so beautiful up there. It's so beautiful up here too. But uh, uh, I wanted uh, to be watchable uh, at the same time. So just remember people, everything starts by putting one foot in front of the other. And uh, whether it's uh, uh, walking a mile or walking 35 miles, like I, I uh, trekked 35 miles for, for Killy, uh, I'll let you know what, uh, hello, yeah, we're going to go. I'll let you know what uh, Aconcagua is when I get back and we put that one together too. But until then, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope for maybe some of you who are looking at doing Kilimanjaro, it gives you an idea of what it's like. And uh, don't take it lightly. Prep. Again, one foot in front of the other. Thanks again. Millie and I are out.